Good morning again. <laughs> we had a little technical snag there. So we are here. We are here on my front porch because, as I said, church is wherever we are. Church is not confined to a building or a room or just the sanctuary as beautiful as it is. Church is wherever God is and God is everywhere. So where we are, there is church in your homes, at my home, on the porch with neighbors walking by. That's church. And we continue to be church in this time and place. So I welcome you to worship this day. There are a couple of announcements because it wouldn't be church without announcements. No, would it? No, it would not. So we have a new Bible study starting on May 13th. It is on the book of Acts by Matthew Skinner. Um, it's called Acts Catching Up with the Spirit. And we will be catching up with the Spirit as we continue to discern God's path for the church and for ourselves. Um, we are going to be having a special Lessons and Carols on May 22nd for Easter Tide and Ascension. So I'm very excited about that. And then May 29th is, of course, Pentecost. And in our lead up to Pentecost, we are listening for the Spirit to move us and to move the church. So as we begin our time together here on my front porch, which is very pleasant this morning, um, I am wearing, as Tracy pointed out a couple of weeks ago, I'm wearing the stole because it is Communion Sunday. So I hope you have some bread or some goldfish and some grape juice or something to eat and to sip as we share communion together. So let us begin our time together with the song that we have been singing. I've been doing this with the kids um, every day for our kids time. And we know that we wash our hands and sing this three times and our hands are super clean. So. This is our new church ritual. Instead of lighting a candle, we wash our hands, which I think is a good thing anyway. <laughs> so we sing this three times. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. So please join with me. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Let's join in our call to confession. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. First, let's say a prayer together. Gracious and loving God, be present with us as we turn our hearts to worship you. We thank you that you are present everywhere, all at once, wherever we are. There you are as well. And we ask your blessing of the Holy Spirit to pour out upon everyone worshiping today with us online or gathered anywhere throughout your beautiful world. May Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, meet us today in your glory. Amen. So we come to God with open hearts and we release the fears, we release whatever is weighing us down. I've been talking with the kids about saying I'm sorry and how that relates to worship with our confession where we tell each other and especially God I'm sorry for my mistakes for our mistakes as a church and God forgives us so in that spirit let us confess to God In these moments of speech and silence, we pray, loving God, that you will speak to us. Speak to us words of invitation to bring to you all the stuff, the junk that stands between us and you. 
Speak to us words of invitation to come to you and rest. Speak to us words of love and grace, comfort and forgiveness, and help us to listen for your voice. Holy God, because we did not listen, because we ignored your voice and ignored your will for our lives, we failed you time and again in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. Gracious God, forgive us. God's beloved, know that God has heard our prayers and we are invited into a fresh start. We are invited into a new beginning. Forgiveness is ours from our loving God. So please accept God's forgiveness for you. Forgive each other and most importantly, forgive yourselves. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Christ is our peace. Strangers and friends, male and female, old and young, Christ has broken down the barriers to bind us to him and to each other. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. So, Hey, my covenant kids, can I see you out there? Maybe, maybe I see you. I don't have the little candles with me today, but I've got one big one I'm gonna light for all of us. There it goes. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see that in this light, but the candle is lit. And that's a reminder that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the love in our lives, and that we are to be Christ's light in the world and to be God's love in the world as well. So, we've been talking a lot about saying, I'm sorry, right? In our little times together, we've talked about saying, I love you, and how we say that to God in worship with praise, we praise God, and then we talked about, I'm sorry, and how that relates to confession, so, Grayson and Addie, hi. I hope you're well today. So today we're gonna talk about why. Why? Sometimes we just wanna ask why. Why, God? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? But in order to understand that, we have to listen. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't get answers. But Jesus, in our story today, talks about sheep. And sheep who listen. Mm -hmm. Now, picture in your minds a herd of sheep. Can you run around like sheep? Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> sheep just running everywhere. They're everywhere. Are they listening? Sometimes the shepherd has to say, hey, sheep, hey, sheep, come back here. Come back here. You're getting a little too close to the edge of the cliff there. Come on back. Come on back, sheep. So your moms and dads probably say stuff like that to you at times, like, hey, kids, you're a little too close to the road. Oh, stay away from there. That's dangerous. We want you to be safe. Well, that's what Jesus says too. Hey, people, people listen to me. I want you to have a good life and I want you to feel safe too. So listen to what I'm saying to you, right? Yes, yay, Grayson, run across the room like a sheep. Can you make a buying sound like a sheep? I'm sure Addie can. <laughs> I'm sure Grayson can too, how about Gideon, yeah? I'm pretty sure you're all really good at making a sheep sound, like a ba, right? So sometimes the sheep have to stop baaing and listen for the shepherd so that they know what might not be a good thing to do and also what good things there are to do. 
and to make sure that we are welcoming other people into the flock, right? Because we listen to what Jesus says. So sometimes the sheep have to listen mm -hmm, as well as run around and be sheep. Because Jesus, the good shepherd, right? Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd who takes care of the sheep, who wants them to be safe and well fed. And Jesus doesn't want that just for us, but Jesus wants that for everyone no matter what flock they're in. So, be good sheep, okay? And listen for Jesus and listen to your parents. Have a good day, guys. Love you and miss you. Can't wait to run around like sheep with you. Okay, now we have some music. Our hymn for the day. I'm going to hold this close to the speaker. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try, but you can hear it, I hope. It is our hymn, which is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. And Ryan has graciously played this and recorded it for us. And the words are there in the bulletin on the back. So here we go. Hopefully there won't be too much traffic noise. I might not have thought this one all the way through. Amen and amen. Our psalm is Psalm 23. I'm going to read, I think it is the King James Version, yes. So I hope that you say it along with me in whatever version that you know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And I found this beautiful poem 
that was recently written based on Psalm 23. For fears subdued amidst a global crisis, peace to fill the anxious hours. We click, we read, we brood. By quiet waters, lead us in your care. For friendship felt by those in solitude, be thou our shepherd with us on this way. A lonely, dark, and dismal valley looms ahead. Assure and guide us through. Help us with hope, await the coming day, and trust that in your Father's house are many rooms. Lord, give us ears and hearts for you, we pray. For fears subdued amidst a global crisis, peace to fill the anxious hours. By quiet waters, lead us in your care. Amen. I invite you to listen for the word of God and not the sound of my stomach growling. I rarely eat before communion. I fast before I take communion. And in the sanctuary, you can't hear my stomach growling. But unfortunately, with the mic so close here, you might pick up a couple sounds. So this is our reading from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the Good Shepherd. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. For your word to us this day, we give you thanks, O God. So speak, Lord, to our speaking. Speak, Lord, to our listening. And speak, Lord, to our soul's deep understanding. Amen. So it is Good Shepherd Sunday, and I thought it was fitting that we would do church here on the Wailing Porch once again with the cars going by because this is our pasture. This is where I find sustenance and peace and abundant life right now in these times. So I wanted to share that with you once again. And there are actually more cars zipping by today than there were on Palm Sunday. I'm not sure why, but there are. So we have a passage from John this morning and it's not the easiest of Gospels in the best of times. And doing this sort of, um, it's, it's been tucked in, you might say, in the wider lectionary readings of the Gospel of Matthew, but still there are some wonderful things within John, and I, I do love it. And from what Jesus was saying, and he's talking to Pharisees here, and the disciples and some others are sort of standing off to the side listening to all this. And it sounds like it is about gates and sheep and shepherds and thieves and nobody's understanding what Jesus is saying. But I can tell you, it's not about gates, except that the gate 
that leads to safety at night and good grazing during the day. I can tell you it's not about keeping some people out and letting others in with the right passwords. I can tell you it's not really about sheep or even shepherds. It is about dwelling in the presence of God and listening for God's leading. It's about listening for Jesus in our lives. As I said, Jesus is debating with some Pharisees who have challenged his authority yet again, even as his disciples and others are listening in. And Jesus rarely uses parables in the Gospel of John. John does not have Jesus speaking in parables. This is like. But here, in order to draw this beautiful picture of Jesus' identity and his mission, he turns to these like figures of speech. Now, let's not forget Jesus and John and the community that John is writing for are steeped in the Hebrew scriptures, where the promised Messiah is described as a caring and skillful shepherd, in contrast to the worthless shepherds who neglect, exploit, and scatter the flock. There are many false shepherds, Jesus says, who actually have them only their own interests in mind. Thieves and bandits who will exploit them or abandon the flock when the wolves come around. The true shepherd, which I think is maybe a little better translation, actually cares about the sheep. The true shepherd or the good shepherd leads them out into pastures by day and at night leads them back into that safe space, that sheep, sheepfold through the gate. And yes, Jesus identifies himself with the gate. That is that evening passage to safety and the morning passage to nourishment. Jesus identifies himself using those same I am statements that God did with Moses. The good or true shepherd who enters by the gate and whose voice the sheep recognize and trust the sh true shepherd who actually cares for the sheep, not just to take advantage of them or to fleece them. That was David's joke. Blame him. The gate doesn't get slammed shut in the face of some sheep. All the sheep are invited into that safety and all the sheep are taken back out again into the abundance of life. Then we get to the nugget of this parable, this teaching, the purpose of Jesus' mission. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. In other words, the true shepherd loves the sheep and it's a tangible, down-to-earth, everyday kind of love. Sheep and pastures and safety are everyday things. There's nothing extraordinary other earthly about them. It is day-to-day -day living. It's a safe place to lay your head and it's enough food to eat is dwelling with God and in God's presence and in the presence of Jesus. And the sheep sense this deep care and love in that voice. They trust this shepherd and they follow. The sheep are listening, truly listening. They hear Jesus, they listen for that love and care in that voice. And they see that in the actions. The sheep aren't analyzing arguments about theology. They are experiencing and sensing the shepherd's care and love firsthand. They are experiencing that abundance of life lived in the presence of love even if we are a little bit hungry, love can help soften the hunger pangs. When we abide deeply and richly in God's abundant life, we are fed not just physically, but emotionally as well. And the sheep sense 
that they are cared for not only physically, but emotionally. And isn't that God's call to us as well? Isn't that what Jesus tries to tell us? It's not that we follow mindlessly. No, we always discern things together. We think about decisions, but we sense that God and Jesus have our best interests at heart as well. That our interests are their interests and vice versa so that we live in unity with them. So we hear that voice and we respond. But we have to listen. We need to listen so we can hear that loving, caring voice or feel that little nudge, that little tug at our hearts, that unsettled, restless feeling that we might have in our souls, in our bellies, or that deep peace and comfort in our hearts. That's when we know that we are listening. And this is the good news of the gospel. God is with us. God calls us to be with God in unity of like mind. Jesus invites us into the safety of the sheepfold at night and out into the abundance of the pasture by day. And we are invited, invited into this deep, loving, indwelling experience. But what about those who don't hear Jesus' voice? Does this mean they're somehow left out or excluded? No. No, it doesn't. In Jesus' Good Shepherd teaching, he goes out of his way to warn his followers against exclusionary assumptions. I have other sheep, he says, that do not belong to this fold. It's not up to us to put limits, religious or otherwise, on God's love and care. Jesus is the true shepherd who has our best interests at heart. Are we listening? Do we hear our shepherd's voice and recognize it out of all the other voices and distractions all around us? That's the question for each of us. Are we of one accord with God? Do we dwell in unity with God and Jesus and the way of Jesus Christ? Are we truly listening for the shepherd's voice? Amen. Last week we started some spiritual practices in the lead up to Pentecost because the disciples were listening and waiting. And here we are in our rooms or our porches or backyards or apartments or condos or wherever we are right now, waiting. And while we wait, we can listen for God's voice, for Jesus' call to us. So last Sunday, we emptied because before sometimes we can listen, we need to sort of empty ourselves to allow God to fill us. So remember, we clenched our fists really tight, right? So we let go of assumptions, expectations, our agenda, and let it go. Release it. If you need to, do it again and again and again. <laughs> Release. It takes practice to be a good listener. But listening is our bridge to God's wisdom. And it, it's an essential part of our discernment together where we identify God's messages for us. Listening enables us to tune in to others and our own inner voices of intuition and conscience. We did this with the kids. Remember God's command to Israel. Hear, listen, O Israel. Listen up. So to listen, we have to let go of some things. We have to empty ourselves and we have to practice to have a listening heart which leads to that deepening relationship with God and with each other. So, sit comfortably. Take some deep breaths in and out. Relax, because you don't have to be tense to do this. 
As a matter of fact, it's better not to be tense. It's better to be relaxed. Just sit in God's loving presence just for a moment. Don't listen. Don't do anything. Just relax into God's love just for a moment here. going to take some deep breaths in and as we do that we are going to say to ourselves or out loud make an altar and as we breathe out of my ears imagine your ears as altars because we are a visual people we are embodied people sometimes we need these symbols and signs for us to connect with the holy so as we breathe in Make an altar and breathe out of my ears. Now I want you to close your eyes and begin by listening to the rhythm and sound of your own breath. You can probably pick up the sounds around me right now. The car is going by. Listen to the sounds in the room around you. Focus on that. Don't think about them, just hear them. Now I want you to visualize yourself. This might seem a little hmm, flighty, but it's okay. Visual, visualize yourself as a bird flying through the air and hearing with bird's ears. Sometimes we need to get out of ourselves to truly listen. See yourself as a tree standing in a park and hearing with the tree's ears. What do you hear? Feel yourself becoming part of the earth and hearing what the earth is hearing. What is going on around the world, on the earth, in the earth right now? Now hear what God is hearing from the world right now. What cries are coming to God? What voices of praise? What cries of distress? What voices of joy? What bird song? Rest in the sensation that God is listening through your ears. What is God hearing? Listen for God. Amen. I invite you to do this during the week. It's a practice. It's a practice. Just as any prayer is a practice, so is this. So we practice these things to become proficient. And we do this on our own and in the community, but we always need to listen for God's direction. We always need to listen to hear that shepherd's voice of Jesus reminding us how much we are loved. I invite you to this practice during the week. We also practice generosity. And it's important even when we aren't physically gathered to continue to support the work of the church and the people we touch with our ministries. We continue to provide for the food pantry. We continue to provide for the care of our congregation, to worship, to provide different types of worship throughout the week, we continue to provide. We are celebrating the wonderful news that we received the Ignite grant to be used for helping kids deal with the trauma in their young lives. And we have a feeling that there are going to be even more children dealing with trauma after this is over. 
So we are so, so thankful that we have this opportunity to help our community and especially the children. So we give thanks for that, but we also know that it's EDR week and our folks are going to be safely providing hot meals for Emanuel Dining Room in Wilmington, observing safe practices in the kitchen. We have opened our doors to the Lions Club because the community center is closed right now for renovation and they are cooking meals. My gosh, for their um, folks that they serve who are hungry and we're seeing more hungry people. So you can drop off your food donations at the church door. Um, we are observing safe practices always, always, because we don't want anybody to take any unnecessary risks. Jesus did not. Jesus said, don't put God to the test. So we observe what Jesus says. We listen. So it is important to continue to support the church and its ministries because so many people depend on us. So here is our address. If you'd like to send in a check, that would be wonderful. It is also on our website. So think about your dedication to the church and let's say our prayer. May the gifts we send open our eyes to see Jesus in the people that we serve. May the gifts we send open the eyes of the ones we serve to see the loving face of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to light our candle. If you have a candle at home, I'm going to attempt to light this on the porch. It's a little breezy. There we go. Yay, it worked. And gather your elements, your communion bread, or your goldfish or your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, whatever you have. I have my grape juice and the cup. Jesus was always a guest at someone else's table, in a home, in an upper room ordinary people, rich people, poor people, sinners, hungry people. Jesus sat with them all. Jesus shared a meal with all of them, and Jesus shares a meal with us. This is the table where Jesus is the host. On the road to Emmaus, he sat at the table in someone else's home and offered blessing and broke the bread and they knew him. So here we are at our tables in our homes on my front porch. Hi neighbor. <laughs> and we break bread together. And we too will see Jesus. Jesus love and care is here surrounding us right now. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. In worship, we testify to God's love shown in Christ. And we recommit ourselves to love one another as a community of faith and to share that love with our community. So taste and see that the Lord is good. God of love is because you're of your immense love for us that you became our servant, that you willingly suffered to give us abundant life. And for that love, we give you thanks. We praise you for the way that love is evidenced in creation, the beauty of the sounds around us as we listen in the bird song, in the scampering of the squirrels along the fence. We give you thanks for the way that love is evidenced in our community as we reach out and share 
as we help with food and pray and open our doors in a safe way for others to help provide. Gracious God, we see your love in our church, in the people who reach out with care to each other and to people who are hurting, who are lonely. We see that care in the way that we care for each other. We see that love evidenced in our lives, and we see that love evidenced in the good things that have happened this past week. For the love and devotion that the healthcare workers show every day, there is your love. There is selfless giving. God of love, you call us to listen and to respond to that voice of love and care. Help us to reflect that love in our care of your beautiful creation. Help us to listen to the needs of the earth as we move back into activity. Keep us mindful of the renewal that has happened while we've been silent. Help us to listen to our community and to their needs and to shower them with love. Help us to reflect that love through this church even as we sit in our homes apart. We are still the church Help us to reflect that love in all that we do in our ministries. Help us to reflect that love to the people who are dwelling with us. Help us to reflect that love by being good neighbors and wearing masks and keeping a safe social distance. Help us to reflect that love in our prayers for people who are hurting this day, O oh God, who need to hear a kind word, who need to feel and hear that love and care in a voice. We pray for those who are ill this day. We pray for those who have COVID-19, either dwelling at home or in the hospital. We pray for those who are dying. We offer our prayers and you remind us that nothing separates us from your love. Even walking through those darkest valleys, you are there with us and you are there with each soul as it finds its eternal rest with you. Gracious God, we pray for all who mourn this day. We pray for, oh, so many families now who have been touched by this and touched by death from cancer, from heart attack, from stroke. Gracious God, we dwell and abide in your love and we know that they have returned to your loving care but the hearts still ache. Help them find solace and comfort in the voice of your love. So gracious God, we give you all of our prayers in the words of our lips and now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear all of our prayers. And now as God's people, we say the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus sat at a table, an ordinary table, with his disciples and those he loved. And after the meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. In the same way, he took a cup and he poured wine into it and he blessed it. And he gave it to the disciples to drink and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed with my blood. I will drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom. Take and drink. Do this and remember me. As God's beloved people, as the sheep of the good shepherd, the true shepherd, we do these things and we remember everything that Jesus taught us and teaches us still. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. Jesus' blood poured out for us all. Take and drink. Let's gather our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, in all our words and actions. May we be your servants and reflect your love. May we always listen for that true shepherd's voice calling us into abundant life and living. We pray this in the name of your servant son, Jesus Christ, who lives, reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. And we say our vision statement together. We are a congregation loving God, connecting people, changing lives, and reflecting Christ to the world. And we truly are. And we truly live that. And our benediction response. is here. God be the love to search and keep me. Amen. Christ be the love that surrounds each and every one of you. And may God bless you. Christ's peace prevail in your hearts. And God's spirit keep you in care and love. Listening always for that voice that truly cares for each of us and the world. Amen. 
I will see you after we blow out our candles tomorrow morning at 8 for devotions. Have a peaceful rest of the day and listen for God throughout the week. Amen.